And hello everyone, welcome back to another Flask tutorial. So in this tutorial, we'll be talking about uploading files using Flask. Now, before we start, I just want to quickly show you something. I'm going to use a new command to run my Flask application, if run. If run is just an alias for what we've been using this whole time. So if I were to go here and just search if run, then here we go. It just exports the Flask environment to development and then it runs Flask. So if run is just doing what we've been doing this whole time, but instead of having to type all of this out, I just say if run. So that's what this means here. If I click it, it's going to start up the server, open the link, and here we go. So let's remove most of this because for most of it, we won't really need it. Then here with this forward slash, you could use a different route here. I'm just going to use forward slash to keep it simple. We're going to add the methods and this will allow us to use different methods. Now you get a post request and you get a get request. A get request sends all of its data in the URL. A post request sends all of its data in a secure body. You usually use post requests whenever you have secure data that needs to be sent or when you have more data to be sent than what can fit inside of a URL because a URL has a limit of how long it can be. All right, so passwords and stuff like that, post, images, post because images are large. And then things like search results like getting his user's username, that could be a get request. Then here we can add a method and these methods will contain a post and a get request. Now, when we go to form HTML, then here we have a form we can use. So first of all, I'd like to make the action just forward slash, meaning this route. If there is no action, it is by default going to be this route. So you can either put an action here or remove it because this right here will be exactly the same as this right here. Our method is going to be post because we'll be sending an image over and images are a little big. So you don't want to send them via get requests because get request has a limit on how long it could be. For example, a URL can only be so long before Google stops listening to what that URL has in it. Then we want to actually get the image. So here I'm going to just create an input and this input will be of type file because we want to select a file to upload and we can have a name and we just call it uploaded file. This name here is important. We are going to be using it. Now there's one thing we have to take note of here. We cannot just post this. We cannot just say, Hey, submit the data because this form is actually sending a file. A file isn't quite the same as a piece of text. So when we try and send this file, we need to tell the form that we are trying to send a file. So we can say ENC type and it's like encryption type multi-part form data. This means allow us to send images over this form or actually any file specifically it doesn't need necessarily mean just images. And then I want to get us a little bit comfortable with Jinja. Now we'll be covering Jinja more in the future, but Jinja is what we use to display dynamic data on a website. So if a certain parameters are matched, we display data. If others are not matched, we don't display data. For example, we're going to be using these brackets here. This is to use Jinja. These brackets contains percentage symbols. So anything inside of these is considered a Jinja keyword or Jinja code. We can say if and then upload success. So if the upload was successful and then we just need to say end if and this will end the dev statement. So if the upload was a success, we want to display it here. If it was not successful, then we don't want to display anything here. We can then say, uh, let's go H1 and say upload 
was successful. There we go. You'll notice it doesn't display here because this is not met. If we say this, then here upload, oh, upload was successful because it is not success. But if you remove this, since upload success is not defined, we'll have nothing here. Cool. Next up, let's code this part inside of Python. So here you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to keep it as form. Then we can say upload success is equal to false. So it's not successfully uploaded yet. Then we want to check if the request method is a get or post request. So if request dot method, and we can just say if that is equal to post, then we can say if is equal to, or you can close whatever you want, we can actually say file, is equal to request dot files. So this will request the files we ask for. And here, the file we are trying to request will be none other than upload file. This name here is now important. This name is what we are going to put here, uploaded file. So this right here, very important now. It is associating this data here. All right, so now we have the file. Next, we can say file.save. And here you have to be extra careful. If you are not going to specify a special name for this file, for example, cool.png for it as an example, then you need to secure the file name because someone could potentially upload malicious code as the file name. So to negate that, we can say secure and then file name. And the secure file name comes from from Bergsig. I don't know what this is. Oh, that should be from from this dot utils. I have no idea what this is, but you do use it often in Flask when you want to do things with security. So secure file name. So this will secure a file name for us. It will remove any invalid characters such as forward slashes. We don't want forward slashes to be in a file name because that's very, very dangerous. And you can just say file dot file name and this will get the file name for us and it will secure that name. So we'll save it as the original name. And then if we get to this point here, the upload was successful. So we can say upload success is equal to true. Now we need to pass this upload success back to our page. So when we go to form.html, we can see this. Now to do that, it's fairly simple. We just say upload success is equal to upload success. So this is what we're going to access it with. So right here, I and mean, this is the value. So we make this SD then here we'll need to make that SD as well. Cool. If you save and you refresh, everything should be updated. Let's test it out. Let's try and upload a file. Choose file. And here I have an icon I want to upload. I can just say select and then at icon.png, say submit data and then upload was successful because the upload was a success. However, let's say the upload was not successful. So let's say if we go here and we said if file dot file name dot ends with and then we just pass in PNG or let's say JPEG. So now only JPEG files are allowed to be sent. We can then do this. Now the upload will not be successful. So now if we go here and we refresh, let me just maybe, there we go. We refresh. If I try and upload this icon PNG again, say submit data, it's not going to show us that it was a success because it was not a JPEG. And of course, 
With this here, you can make it very powerful. You can notify the user if it was successful or not. And here, you know how to parse image files now. And that's the basics of uploading files with Flutter. And of course, the icon would be here now. As you can see, here's the icon. If I delete it, and we re-upload that icon PNG, submit data, icon PNG is here again. So it does actually upload the file. You might want to create a new folder to store these files. For example, a user folder, and in that has all of the images for that user. But that's for another day. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all again in the next Flask tutorial.